Welcome, collectors. Thank you for joining me for another new episode of Diecast Emporium. In today's review, we're going to be taking a look at an older NZG Caterpillar model. This is the Cat D9R track type tractor. This would have been released sometime in the mid to late 1990s, towards the end of NZG's tenure as a Caterpillar licensee. They made several different versions of the Cat D9R, this version, which is the standard Cat Black and Yellow. They also made one in Military Green, a Mining White version, and there are several other different variations that you can find periodically. Now, the D9R is one of the most popular variations of the Cat D9 lineage that goes all the way back to the first track type tractors of the era. So with that information out of the way, let's take a look at the packaging. The NZG boxes, for the most part, were all of this similar prototypical design. You have the black and yellow cat over here, cat D9R. On the side, you have the outline drawing, cat D9R, track type tractor, and then various different ways to say track type tractor in multiple different languages. Same thing on this side with the addition of the scale, 150th scale. Underneath, you can see that it is made by NZG but distributed at the time by Norscott Group, not to be confused. So it is an NZG model distributed by Norscott Group, which of course historians and collectors will know that Norscott soon after would take over the rights to not only distribute, but to manufacture scale models for uh, CAT through much of the 2000s. All right, let's begin the unboxing. This particular NZG model comes in the styrofoam. There's a little extra protection in this one in the fact that it has this little piece protecting the ripper, so you carefully remove that. Reach in, careful what you grab onto, pull straight out because there's no twisty ties or anything with holding the model carefully in the box. Once you've done that, you are ready to display your dozer. Okay, let's begin the model review. First thing I want to point out is that I did pick mine up secondhand, so there are going to be some noticeable paint chips and some styrofoam that is still stuck to the rubber tracks. I have done my very best to clean off most of that, but it appears as though this has spent much of its life in the styrofoam, and you are going to unfortunately have some of that clash on the uh, rubber tracks on some of these old NCG models, but that's just fine. All right, let's begin with the decals because they are nicely crisp applied, crisply applied for a model of this age. You have D9R over here with your red line, cat, caterpillar right over here, and then coming back along the side, D9R, and then caterpillar on the rollover protection structure part of the cab, the roll bar part of the cab, I should say. And then you have your black line here with the red line underneath that. That's it for the decals. There's no warning labels of anything. That was way before that's time of anything in terms of detail adding to this model. Um, one thing I do like on the front, this isn't really a decal. It's more of a sticker, but you see the forward-facing lights that have a silver-like finish to it. A lot of these NZG models, once again, particularly the cat ones in the later run, had the blue window tint on it, which in my opinion looks good. Some collectors don't like it. I always did. Some of the older NZG pieces, even before this one, they would have a green tint. Some of them have a clear tint. This dozer had the blue tint. All right. Uh, other details. You have a rubber air cleaner and a rubber air, air plastic exhaust. Uh, your cylinders are also plastic but they have stood the test of time rather well. All of your jackets, in fact, are plastic. As you can see on the back, they're pretty crudely applied. You can see that they're almost see-through here on the inside portions of it. And it's like that on the other side as well, right here. But they are robustly made, and it still works and holds up pretty well. So you can tell that, obviously, there's good quality there. Taking a look underneath the dozer, you can make out NZG model. This is model number 288, I believe. 150 scale, made in West Germany. 
which is what the original casting for this dozer was. Obviously not this version. Uh, number 451, and then this particular one has a date of 1998. Okay, let's turn our attention to the functionality now. I want to be really careful with this, again, due to its age. Let's start out with the blade functionality. Cylinders are extremely stiff on here. So again, you want to take a little bit of care when you're doing this. They will go up farther than that, but just for the sake of the video to demonstrate, I'm only going to take it up to there. You do have some tilt. You can tilt it forward. So I'll tilt it to there. You can go back as well. Let's bring things down to the other extent. Go slightly below. Get yourself a decent cut angle there. Not too bad. All right, let's go to the ripper end of things. You can lower the ripper. That will go below the machine enough to raise it off the ground. Curl it back. Curl it in. And then obviously raise it up out of service as well. Now these tracks, again, because of the age and some of the dry rotting issues you can get with old rubber tracks, I am not going to attempt to move them either on the surface or by hand. If you would like to, when you get your model, you are more than welcome to try that. But there's what they look like. That's a good up-close look. As I said before, overall, this is a fantastic representation of an older Cat D9R. As I said, there are some imperfections in terms of the overall mold and scaling, but for a mid-90s to late-90s model, you can't really complain. Uh, as far as the D9s as a whole by NZG, they were really mostly based on the D9Ns uh, and then the D9Ls and then the D9Rs. So the, the, overall very, the overall casting changed very little. So you will have some modeling compromises there in terms of actual scale um, for those that are really, really particular about sizing on everything. Uh, but that said, it's a nice looking model. It does display well, even with today's newer pieces. And you will have, as I said before, you will have some flaking of paint, even if this thing has stayed in the box the majority of its life, that you will just have that with age. So that's the D9R by NZG. If you are currently looking for the newest version of the Cat D9 in 150 scale that you can get, here it is. This has been out for a number of years now. This is the Diecast Masters Cat D9T. In fact, this was one of the first proper Diecast Masters uh, Highline series models that they did when they took over the license from Norscott and Tonkin Replicas. Solidly built model. If you are interested in seeing an up-close review of this particular model, take a look at your screen right now. I will provide a suggested link so that you can check this model out. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, take care and be safe. I will see you in the next review.